My name's Quick Picnic, and having simulated millions of lineups, here's your locks and lotteries for the Week 8 main slate of the NFL on both FanDuel and DraftKings this Halloween Sunday, October 31st. Stick around to see full FanDuel and DraftKings lineups at the end of this video, and subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any future lineups, continuing with Monday Night Football tomorrow as well as the occasional NBA lineup. Just some basic ground rules, a lock in this video means my model found that player in many top-ranked simulated lineups with a high confidence interval to score more points than their price point would suggest, whereas the lottery is still expected to exceed expectations but with a slight slightly lower confidence interval. Getting right into it, by far the most valuable lock of a quarterback in this slate is Teddy Bridgewater, ranking 15th on FanDuel's price list and 19th on DraftKings. Bridgewater seems to be one of the most straightforward picks we've seen this season. He's currently averaging around 17 fantasy points per game, has one of the lowest costs among viable quarterbacks in this slate, and faces the weakest passing defense in the league, with Washington ranking last in allowed passing yards to opponents as the only team with over 300 passing yards allowed per game. In my self-proclaimed professional opinion, there is no reason to look any further than Bridgewater in this slate. He has the best cost, the best matchup, and the best value at quarterback on both platforms. Moving to running backs, the most common lock in my simulations is Daryl Henderson. Going into Houston, with the Texans ranking as the second worst rushing defense in the NFL with respect to allowed rushing yards, Henderson should be able to have another massive game, building upon his 16 points per game average. Another lock found in a significant amount of lineups is Damian Harris, who doesn't cost very much on either platform, but has one of the best opportunities at his position. The Chargers have allowed the most rushing yards to opponents this season, and with Harris carrying the ball 14 or more times in each of the past three weeks for New England, a similar game script could allow Harris to score huge points without the huge price tag. Other lottery options at the position include James Robinson scoring over 17 fantasy points in four consecutive weeks at this point and facing Seattle's bottom three rushing defense, Derrick Henry, who's almost always going to find his way into these videos at least as a lottery with over 25 fantasy points per game, especially against a disappointing Colts team, Jonathan Taylor burning it down for Indianapolis recently, averaging around 24 fantasy points per game across his past four weeks, and Joe Mixon, priced similarly to Daryl Henderson and ranked third in cumulative rushing yards across the NFL. At wide receiver, the best lock my model found in this slate is Emmanuel Sanders. Miami has allowed the third most passing yards to opponents this season, and with Sanders staking his claim to the top of Buffalo's depth chart recently, outscoring Stefan Diggs in two of the Bills' past four contests, Sanders might be one of the better receivers in this slate. With a bunch of other viable picks here, I'll try to get through most of the notable options quickly. In the same vein as Sanders, Stefan Diggs could be the top dog for Buffalo once again, so if you're willing to spend the extra dough, he could be a good pick. Jamar Chase once again finds his way onto this list, still being especially underrated on DraftKings as Chase ranks top 5 in both receiving yards and touchdowns per game among receivers. Benefiting from Bridgewater's hopefully solid performance against a porous Washington defense, Cortland Sutton could have good value with above 19 fantasy points in two of his past three contests, as could Tim Patrick, pretty much a cheaper version of Sutton with parallel performances over the past three weeks, or Jerry Judy, fresh off IR into a great comeback opportunity. Marvin Jones, on the other hand, has been very hot and cold this season, but against a bottom 5 passing defense in Seattle, the Jaguars might be able to continue momentum into another hot week. One last player worth taking a look at on the other side of the ball is DK Metcalf, not costing too much with a matchup against one of the worst defenses in the league while averaging over 15 points per game himself. Moving on to tight end, the best lock my model came up with here is Noah Fant for all of the reasons I've covered about Bridgewater and his receiving core this week. Fant has been targeted eight times per game across the past four weeks, scoring two touchdowns with over 200 yards during that span. His cost is pretty good too, ranking eighth on FanDuel's price list and fifth on DraftKings. Otherwise, a nice lottery tight end you could find at very low cost is Moali Cox, scoring four touchdowns across the past four weeks and this week facing a Tennessee defense that typically allows more touchdowns to passing than rushing. At flex, you can pick from the dozens of options I've already listed or just someone you like given a favorable matchup and at defense, my model tries to find the cheapest option available without picking a blowout. On FanDuel, a few of those defenses this time around include the Lions, Jaguars, and Bears while DraftKings offers the Lions and Jaguars again with the addition of the Colts. And finally, at the end of the line, here are two of my model's top-ranked lineups on both FanDuel and DraftKings. Again, there were many different combinations my model found with several options at each position, so in no way are either of these lineups perfect, but these ones in particular caught my eye from my top-ranked simulations. This has been Quick Picnic, and thanks for watching.